There is going to be a lot of that happening. An entire video where I blow up elite vanguards repeatedly. This is the greatest thing ever. I don't know why I didn't make this my first video. But before we get started, there are two things we need to go over. First, I'll only be discussing the MK2 variants. The Mark 1s do have niche uses, but 99% of the time you're going to want to be using the Mark 2s. Secondly, this video will not cover turrets. That will be in a later video. I won't be covering the destroyer's main guns either, as this is dependent on the faction, and you can't swap them out for a different variant. Now we are going to break up this video into four parts. First the generic weapons, then the commonwealth faction weapons, followed by split guns, then lastly the Terrans. So let's get started with the beam emitter. This is a hitscan weapon, so you don't need to lead the target, just point and shoot. While this does make it the most accurate weapon, it also deals the lowest damage. Now the damage isn't so low as to make it irrelevant, but I can't recommend this gun in a combat scenario unless you really like it. That doesn't mean it's useless though. I normally have a scout ship that I use as a dedicated mission runner that's equipped with a beam emitter. I find that it works very well in clearing mines, murdering civilians, and mining for lodestones and spacefly eggs. Next is a weapon that everyone should be familiar with and that is the pulse laser. This is your starter gun and your only gun until you unlock the rest by increasing your faction reputation. While it is not great at anything, that doesn't mean that it's bad. If you don't know what gun to give your ships, you can't really go wrong by defaulting to the pulse laser. In fact, if this is the only gun you ever used, your fighters and frigates would still be effective. A very solid, general purpose weapon for sure. Then we have the bolt repeater. It hits harder than the pulse laser, but overheats faster and is less accurate due to the slower projectile speeds. However, it fulfills the same function as the pulse laser, a weapon system designed to destroy other fighters and still be damaging enough to counter frigates. Which one you choose really comes down to personal preference on whether you value accuracy or raw damage. Or maybe you just like the idea of bullets over lasers. This weapon gives you that choice and which way you go is entirely up to you, there is no wrong answer here. Now here we have the Plasma Cannon, your heavy hitter. This weapon hits incredibly hard at the cost of slow projectile speeds and quickly overheating. You're only able to get three shots off before the gun shuts down to cool. While the Plasma Cannon is meant to be used as an anti-capital weapon, that doesn't mean you can't use it against a small fighter. This is because the AI has a habit of flying directly at you. If the enemy gives you an opening like this, throw some plasma rounds at it. Unfortunately, this maneuver requires you to take a bunch of bullets directly to the face, so it's kind of hard to see anything. Hopefully you can still make out what is happening through all that as this is very effective against an enemy dumb enough to fly directly into an oversized gun barrel. The last of the generic weapons is the Shard Battery. It's a space shotgun, you do shotgun stuff with it. Get up close and blast away. The spread isn't as bad as a lot of first person shooters though. It's tight enough that if you fire at a target two kilometers away some of those pellets will hit. Although that doesn't mean that it is effective at that range, only that it will do some damage. If you're the type of pilot that likes dogfighting and getting up really close to the enemy, I highly recommend using this gun. Now we are getting into the Commonwealth weapons where you need at least 10 reputation points with a particular faction to be able to use them. Don't worry, I'll let you know which ones you need. We'll start first with the Ion Blaster. You'll unlock this through the Argon Federation only. The Antigon Republic won't have them. In fact, the Republic won't offer you anything special outside of the generic weapons. Heads up, epilepsy incoming. As you would expect, throwing strobe lights at the enemy doesn't do much damage. 
but it's not supposed to. This weapon is ideal for capturing small and medium vessels. You can quickly strip the shields and maintain fire to convince the crew to abandon ship while doing minimal damage to the hull. Our next weapon is from the Talati company, the Muyon Charger. It does solid damage, inflicts a powerful damage over time effect, and will take forever to overheat. But it is a charge up weapon. Now for a single shot gun, a charge up mechanic is fine, but on a semi-automatic it feels unnecessary and annoying. Personal preference, I don't use this weapon very often because of that. If anyone does, please let us know in the comments, uh, otherwise I got nothing. But the next weapon I do use often, and that is the Blast Mortar. It is available from the Holy Order of the Pontifex and the Ministry of Finance and only for small craft, which is unfortunate because this gun is the Plasma Cannon 2.0. It hits harder, can get 4 shots off before overheating, the projectile moves faster, and it has an area of effect blast. It has a slightly shorter maximum range than the plasma cannon, but if that is the only downside then that is more than fine. The Ares Heavy Fighter was released at the same time as the blast mortar and they seem designed to work together. Give that ship 4 blast mortars and now you have yourself a slow but heavily armed and durable fighter bomber. While the Blast Mortar is a close range AoE death machine, our next weapon is the exact opposite. The Mass Driver is only available from the God Realm of the Paranid and is your sniper rifle. Hits hard, you get two shots before overheating, and it comes with a zoom effect. This gun can fire up to 12 kilometers, so let's see what happens at maximum range. Okay, uh, maybe I have to get a little closer. No, I, I missed again. Still missing at 3 kilometers. Well, I hit it that time, but I kept missing because the weapons are 100% fixed. There is no gimbling, so you're going to have to be a little more careful lining up your shots. Also, gun placement will now be a concern. The farther out on the wings, the harder it'll be to line up your shots. Not a big deal if you're sniping destroyers, but something to keep in mind if you are aiming for smaller. The last commonwealth weapon to cover is also from the god realm, and that is the burst ray. If you're just looking at the stat sheet, this gun seems like utter garbage. The lasers will bleed through shields, but those are really low damage values. Shooting this elite vanguard really isn't changing my mind about it either. Maybe we should try shooting something else. There we go. Turrets, shield generators, and engines are what this gun is designed to destroy. This is probably the most specialized weapon in X4, and as it is only available for small craft, this will lead to a hyper-specialized fighter. So while it can only do one thing, it can do it very well. The burst ray is a bit too specialized for my tastes, but I can definitely see the appeal of it. When it comes to split weapons, they share a common characteristic where they take an existing gun, and then they make it insane. All except for one, and that is the weapon that we are going to start with. Let's ease our way into the ridiculousness that is split weapon technology. So let's talk about the Thermal Disintegrator. It's based off the Pulse Laser, and while it does less damage and has less accuracy, the shots have a damage over time effect and will bleed through the shields into the hull underneath. I use it all the time when boarding the large vessels, and it allows me to inflict damage on the hull without having to bring down the shields so my boarding pods can perform a breach. This gun is a very good alternative to the Pulse Laser. But now the crazy starts with the Neutron Gatling Gun. It looks like a bolt repeater, but there is no reloading. It's just a constant stream of bullets until it overheats. And that bullet spread is extreme. 
so many will miss. But you don't bring one or two of these to a fight. You bring all of them. Whoever designed this took the concept of rapid fire and just went all in on the idea until he made a wall of bullets. You're not going to hit anything past a kilometer, but I don't care. I love this gun. If the idea of being a few hundred meters from your target isn't close enough, then you may want to look at the Tau Accelerator. The split took a shard battery and removed the barrel so that pellets just fly everywhere. The spread on this gun is bad. But to compensate, they turned it into an automatic shotgun, because of course they did. And I love how violently the cockpit shakes when you fire this thing. It feels like they took a gun and removed parts for no reason other than they wanted room for more gun. Split weaponry is so direct and single-minded. I hope that never changes. Our last split gun is the Boson Lance, and it is only available from the Xyarth Patriarchy. That is the faction nobody likes, so it'll be a bit of a reputation grind to get access to it. Much like the others, the split took a mash driver and gave it more boom. You only get one shot before it overheats, but it hits twice as hard. This used to be the go-to weapon for out-of-sector combat as they were able to simply delete ships every few seconds. But now they have been toned down quite a bit. They are still very effective, but they are no longer the god-level weapons that they used to be. We saved the best for last, which are the Terran weapons. Or at least that is what they would say about themselves, as they are supposed to be more technologically advanced compared to everyone else. Either way, let's start with their version of the Pulse Laser. It hits harder at the cost of lower range, but what it gains is accuracy. That projectile speed is high enough that you are going to be hitting most of your shots. It does overheat faster than the generic Pulse Laser, but it's still low enough that you don't really have to worry about it. Compared to the original, I would have to say that the Terran version is better. And then you have the Photon Barrage, which is just a straight upgrade of the Terran Pulse Laser. Well, almost. Those Photon Bolts hit harder, and while slower, they are still fast enough to be accurate. And it maintains a very tight spread, even at maximum range. You will need to watch for overheating, but it's low enough to be considered manageable. So why would you ever use the Terran Pulse Laser when you have this? Because it is expensive. That is a lot of money to invest into a small fighter. Also, the Mark II variant is only available from the Terran Protectorate, so if you're playing as the Sagarius Pioneers, you're not going to have that available at the beginning. If you're playing as the other factions, don't bother trying to install this gun into your ship. It will only work with Terran ships. You can, of course, still buy a Terran ship and install this gun, but that is the only way that you're going to be able to use it. The last weapon we'll be covering is only available to the Terran Protectorate, the Maison Stream. The Pioneers don't even have access to this gun. Same as the Photon Barrage, this weapon can only be installed into Terran ships. And if you thought that gun was expensive, the Maison Stream costs way more. But it's an important gun in the Terran arsenal, as outside of missiles, it's the only weapon that they have that will hit hard enough to break the shield regeneration rate on large ships. Or you can just use a bunch of photon barrages and overwhelm the shields, uh, that will work too. It's devastating when it hits, but because of that very long cooldown, it is not a forgiving weapon. So that's a quick overview of all the small and medium guns. Now I only discussed how each gun works individually. As every ship larger than a scout has at least two gun platforms, you can mix and match and come up with some interesting combinations. I made a Reddit post asking about what your favorite guns are, and there are some good loadouts in there. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out, and feel free to add your own. While not technically a gun, an honorable mention does go to mines. Any excuse to use an elite vanguard as a sacrificial fire ship definitely gets an upvote for me. 
But before we go, if you liked the video or found this helpful, please give a click to all the good buttons at the bottom and share so that more people can see it. Until next time, fly safe.